now what will Bud Crawford offer up? The tail of the tape, Bud Crawford, you look at the numbers and you realize he's in the hurt business. 47.5% of his power punches connect. And keep in mind, the majority of that work is being done against world-class opponents, winning titles in three weight classes. And now he goes up against a sturdy, solid, durable title challenger in Egis Kavioskis. Okay, gentlemen, you received instructions in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Bud Crawford, sort of a human weapon, a man so skilled with his hands and so determined and committed to his job. Bud is a great dad, lovable guy back home, but there comes a moment, and you see it right here, where he flips that switch, and he gets hyper-focused, and as we said, his task, he's in the hurt business. That's right. So here we go, round number one. Timmy, give me something to look for early here with Crawford, who typically dissects, probes, solves, yeah, that's, 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 and then undoes. You just said it. You know, he's going to take his time. He's on a box on the outside. Kavioskis is a power puncher, so he needs to be close. He needs to get close. He's a shorter arm fighter. So Bud's just going to dictate pace. And the way you do that is ring generalship and also using a stiff, sharp jab. One thing I want to point out is Bud can switch from orthodox to southpaw. He came out in the southpaw stance. So you want to focus on the front feet of both fighters, the front foot. Heads can clash as well because both of the power shots land, land on the same side. Dre, it's one thing to be a switch hitter where you have the ability to box in both stances, both the orthodox right-hand stance and the southpaw left-hand stance. It's another thing to have great power, to be able to knock a guy out as a switch hitter. Bud has proven that throughout his career. He has. It's very rare. He has equal skills from both stances and equal power. You don't have to prepare for one style. You have to prepare for multiple styles when you face Terrence Bud Crawford. Camp can get real expensive when you're training for Bud Crawford. you got to pay for <laughs> South Ball sparring yeah. and Orthodox sparring. I think Kavioskis is waiting because he doesn't want to overcommit and get caught by Terrence Crawford, that left hand in that, in that left-handed stance. That's exactly what he's doing, and he just took the jab downstairs on Crawford. You rarely ever see guys go to Crawford's body. The glaring difference right now for me are not the hands, but the feet. Terrence Crawford has educated feet, trained feet. Kaviaskis doesn't. He likes to be still. They're not very quick. He doesn't really have a lot of creativity down low. Doubling up that jab is Crawford. He will range find a bit. By the way, long arms and always can maximize his range on that frame. He's only five foot eight, but he fights as a longer fighter. Heisman night here in New York. A night that now has become tradition rich with top ranked boxing at MSG. And there is Johnny Rogers, Heisman winner from Nebraska. Big Red well represented, of course, and Bud Crawford so loyal to the fans. The mouthpiece tonight is Corn Huskers for Bud. Of course, Nebraska has the rich Heisman history and a current boxing pound-for-pound -pound elite. Three Heisman Trophy winners. You just saw Rogers sitting here ringside. Mike Rogier in 83. Eric Crouch in 2001. All of college football's pound-for-pound -pound guys, right? And then there's Terrence Crawford, now a three-division champion. He started off with the WBO lightweight title. He was the undisputed guy at 140 pounds. Had all four belts after he knocked out Julius Ndongo. 
and most recently taking this WBO welterweight championship. I told you, so loyal to his home state and one of the home state's ultimate football heroes here ringside to see Bud tonight. Crawford's last fight was right here on April 20th. That was the TKO against the former super lightweight world champion Amir Khan. And he started fast that night. Remember, he scored a knockdown in the first round with a right hand. Khan is faster, more experienced, more skilled than Kavioskis. But Kavioskis is more sturdy, far sturdier yes. fighter, stronger. Doesn't have the wear and tear and the miles on the odometer or been through what Khan had been through prior to that point. And that's why Crawford started fast in that fight because the scouting report on Amir Khan was that he couldn't take a shot. So why not catch him early while he's cold? Crawford did that. In this fight, it's a little bit different. Kavioskis is, is sturdy, like you said. He's got a strong jab, strong right hand, and you have to be smart before you start to stay in there close. Right now, Crawford is trying to set the table so he can eat later, and Kavioskis is hoping that he can eat a little bit later down the road as well. And right now, you're seeing the table setting is the placement of that southpaw jab from Crawford. That's the second right hand that I've seen from Kavioskis. You know, when you're fighting a southpaw, that's the punch you're looking for. You're looking for the right hand. And Kavioskis took the first one downstairs, and right there, he just tried one up top. And just a little bit off the mark. See Crawford masterful with that range, isn't he? I just like the, I like the patience of Kavioskis. He's not rushing in there. He doesn't want to get countered. You know, he's taking his time, trying to get Terrence Crawford comfortable. Terrence trying to touch him with that left hand to the body. Patient Kalioskis, see if he takes that nudge forward and fires off that jab again. I like the patience of Kalioskis as well, too. Even though his feet aren't fast, he understands his range and where he needs to be. He's landing some good jabs, and he's in this fight, and he's thinking just like Crawford's thinking. I don't know if that's a good thing because you, you don't want a sharpshooter like Crawford to be sitting back thinking. You know, he should. Oh, good exchange right hand. that time. Right hand came in. Terrence Crawford pulled straight out, threw a combination, left his head right in the middle, pulled straight back, and was hit with the right hand from Kavioskis. And remember, Kavioskis said to us, I can't leave any punches in the ring. You have to take advantage of the few opportunities that come your way. That was an opportunity, and he took advantage. Well done by Agus Kavioskis. Coming to the end of round two here. Welterweight mm. championship fight at Madison Square Garden. Got that. In that second round, Crawford came forward for a moment. Kavioskis had a better moment when he landed the good right hand. That's right, Terrence Crawford going right into the wheelhouse of Kavioskis. Kavajas is a short arm fighter, threw a nice little jab right there and a beautiful right hand and got Terrence Crawford's attention. Crawford coming out kind of fat with those punches, coming out too wide. He needs to shorten those shots up if he wants to step inside. So best work we've seen so far in the early goings goes to the challenger from Lithuania. Well, Kavajas is a two-time Olympian. He knows how to fight. He knows how to deal with styles. He's no slouch. He's undefeated for a reason. Olympic Games in 2008 and 2012. The number one challenger in the WBO. See, the patience of Kavioskis is getting to Ter Terrence right now. He thought he was getting a bull. Right now, he's getting a smart, methodical Kavioskis. A guy that went back to the drawing board after that draw against Ray Robinson. Yeah, that, that can throw you off when you, you see a guy. Oh who's always aggressive, and then all of a sudden he's waiting and, and playing this, you know, this chess game yeah. with you. It takes a moment to kind of wrap your brain around that and make... Oh! Oh! Kavayaskis comes forward, and Bud Crawford was hurt! And they're ruling that a slip. But Kavayaskis came straight ahead yes. and pulled the trigger and got Bud Crawford. There he is, Crawford pulling straight back with his hands extended. 
Crawford's hurt from that shot, y'all. What do we have here? A stunning development early in round three here. It's the patience of Kavioskis. That's what's getting to Terrence. Terrence wants to get to him. He must be smart. A right hand from Kavioskis. And Terrence. That is the beauty of this game. All it takes is one punch. There's always a puncher's chance. When Terrence is counter punching, he's coming out too wide. That's the reason why he's getting countered short by Kavioskis. I, I got to disagree a little bit, Tim. I think it's just in the exchanges. That's where Kavioskis is getting, having his best work is in the exchange. We know Terrence is not afraid to exchange. That's when Kavioskis is timing him and he is clean shots. But Terrence is coming out a little bit too fat with those punches. He's actually catching Terrence on the way in, though. Well, show speed. Well, show speed. That's how he did it in the second round as well with the right hand. Pull him back with his hands down. And now Crawford looks to exchange and pop a right hand. And now Crawford goes to the body. And look at the action we have here in round three as Kavioskis, another exchange. You never know what you're going to get. Incredible third round for Egis Kavioskis. We're going to show you how he did it. And again, it was the right hand as Terrence Crawford clearly affected there. Kavioskis has done what he's done all fight. He's timed Terrence coming in, or when he's waiting, he landed that shot right on the chin. He hurt Terrence bad, and I'm not sure why that wasn't called a knockdown. Joe. Here comes the right hand. Another it's, shot over the top, and Terrence is posing. He's looking at Kavioskis as if he's not supposed to punch. Kavioskis came to win this fight tonight. And then there was just simply the grappling with the arms. The feet never got tied up, but it was ruled a slip. It most likely should have been ruled a knockdown for Kavioskis. But still, now in back-to-back -back rounds, good work with the right hand for the upset-minded title challenger. And the power punches through three rounds. Kavayaskis is landing 42% as they exchange here. And Crawford's landing 30%. He had a 19 and 10 power connect edge through three. So let's check in with Bernardo. Terrence was not hurt. He's good. He recovered well. I didn't think it was a knockdown. All he needs to do is keep his hands up and not get caught in those exchanges. That's the report from the corner of Crawford, there was another right hand moments ago from Kavioskis. Remember, he's in that southpaw stance, and the right hand is the southpaw killer. That's, That's right. what does damage, damage against southpaws. Perhaps Terrence should go back orthodox. I, I think Crawford is eating before he's setting the table. We talked about that earlier, Joe Tess. I, I'm not sure why he's been standing in front of Kavioskis all night long. I anticipated, and I think Kavioskis anticipated Crawford moving, boxing and then trying to come to him mid to late in the fight. I think Crawford's doing a little bit too much too soon. Crawford right now is picking up the tempo. He sure is. Kids. He's willing to That's trade. Look at doing. this. These right hands have now brought out the fight in Crawford. Right. They are exchanging in the middle of the ring. Crawford right now didn't like the way the first half of their fight or the first part of this fight is going. And now he's stepping up the tempo on Kavioskis, and he's trying to push him back. I appreciate the bite down in Crawford, but I still think it's too early. I don't like the 50-50 exchanges, especially with a guy like Kavioskis, who has his feet planted, and he's getting that big right hand off, and he's ready. landing it. 50-50 exchanges when you're this level of world champion. They give the underdog a great chance. Sweeping body shot from Bud Crawford. This crowd is loving this title fight already. The unexpected drama thanks to the right hands of Kavioskis. Crawford was looking to time that left hand. Nothing quite like a world title fight at Madison Square Garden. And then you add in the fact that the upset-minded challenger has come out red hot. Kavioskis has landed a couple big right hands. And now you can hear the buzz. People wondering, how will this play out? But Crawford, who is 
used to dominating the competition, has a guy coming to him now. And Andre Ward's scorecard has it two rounds apiece. Bud takes the first round, likely takes the last, but the second and third round when Kavioskis landed flush with the right hands. And last two rounds, Kavioskis is enjoying a 37 to 24 edge in punches landed. There are the power punches where he has a 31 to 21 connect advantage. Test right now. Crawford wants to be first. That's what he's doing right now, and he wants to be last. He wants to start the exchanges, and he also wants to finish the exchanges. I, I don't like this game plan right now from Crawford. He's fighting fire with fire. He's getting hit with shots he shouldn't be getting hit with this early in the fight. Kavioskis has only been 10 rounds two times, never been 12. Why not weaken him, get him a little I, bit, I agree. you know, fatigued, and then start standing there and exchanging if that's what you want to do. Too much, too soon for Crawford. It's called go to the body, Dre. Go to the body. Slow down the stronger fighter. If you're Kavioskis, keep doing what you're doing. Kavioskis just got to let his hands go, Dre. That's all he got to do. Every time Crawford gets close, he needs to just let those bombs go. He's hurt right now. Kavioskis is hurt with that shot. And Bud senses it here. A minute to go in round five. Bud Crawford, here he is stepping to the challenger, who just moments ago was filled with hope, and now he's willing to come forward with a right hand. Crawford, he sniffed something out. He sniffed him out. He knows that he don't like the pressure. And let me tell you something. Crawford doesn't mind this at all. As much as strategy could say, do else, go elsewhere with it, Crawford doesn't mind a fight. Well, it's is, always been in him. Right. This is the competitiveness, and this is the bite down you see from Crawford. He's trying to break Kaviaskis yep. right now. And if Kaviaskis is going to avoid getting knocked out and have a shot in this fight, he's got to bite down right back. Bite down. What you see from Crawford right now is attitude. You hurt me. You embarrassed me a little bit. Nobody wants to be hurt. So I'm trying to get that back, and that's what Crawford's trying to do. But he got to be careful. Combination comes in from Crawford. He has taken control here in this fifth round. Mm. He shakes that off. The ESPN boxing schedule heats up in 2020. We got Jesse Hart, Joe Smith on January 11th. We got Elidair Alvarez, the recent light heavyweight champion against Michael Seals on January 18th. And then from China on Super Bowl weekend, the WBC junior welterweight champion, Jose Ramirez against Victor Postal. That from China, what a way to celebrate Super Bowl weekend. And right now it's round six with Crawford and Kavioskis and a chance to check in with Max and Mark. Look, Crawford may have just turned the tide in that last round and he can outwill and out tough even a strong-willed tough guy. But when you stop doing the things that got you there, you become ordinary in those respects. And Crawford fighting out of the southpaw stance. Kavioskis best shot is the right hand against the southpaw in this fight. Why hasn't he turned orthodox? And why doesn't New York use instant replay? I thought what happened earlier was a knockdown. First time I, I recall Crawford being hurt since 2014 in Gamboa. It was absolutely a knockdown, clearly a knockdown. No doubt about it, guys. That was after the right hand from Kavayaskis. They grappled a bit. The feet did not get tied up, but it was not ruled a knockdown. Here we are in round six. Joe Tessitore, the why for Crawford is defiance. He's refusing to turn <laughs> right-handed because he wants to prove a point. I know that your right hand, Kavioskis, is your best punch, and I know that's the most, the, the, the easiest yeah. punch that a southpaw is susceptible to, but I'm going to stay like this anyway. No, you, would, you would know his psyche as well as anybody's, Ray. It was an excellent visit you had with him recently. I know he's got great respect for everything you've done in your career. Nice change up from Terrence Crawford. Led with the straight left and came with a nice little right hand to jam. Right, right, right. Beautiful combination. Listen, Crawford has home run written on every punch that he throws. In his mind right now, the only way he feels like he can right the wrong with Kaviaskis hurting him early on is to, to knock Kaviaskis out. He's not boxing tonight, so I'm going to stop calling for it.
Crawford got to be careful. Every time he shoots a shot, break, break, let him go, stop. Kaviaskas is answering. He was sitting on a hook. Really impressed with the timing of Kaviaskas. Yes. I am too. That has been why he's had his moments of success tonight. Coming to the halfway point of now this greatly intriguing welterweight championship fight. Back here at Madison Square Garden, Joe, Tim, and Dre ringside with you. Bernardo, our ace reporter. Round number seven, Terrence Bud Crawford, 35 and 0. With 26 knockouts against the mean machine, Kavayaskis, who was coming off of a mediocre performance after rising up the rankings and then becomes the number one challenger, unbeaten himself, but a big underdog, and yet he has fought about as good a fight as he can fight to this point. Bernardo is in the corner of Terrence Crawford with Brian McIntyre. Bomack, what are you asking for Terrence to do to take control of this fight? I'm, I'm looking for him to, so he can get more rhythm, so he can be a little bit more dangerous. Right now, he don't got he don't got no rhythm, but it looked it look like he might be coming into it now. Is he emotional in this fight because he got tagged in that second round? No, 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 he's not. There's a combination no, that lands right there from Kavayaskis. Uh, I just think I think he liked this competition. What about? Turning to the south, to the from the south part to the orthodox stand. Once he feel it, he'll go to it. You're not asking him for it. No. Uh -uh. Once, once he feel it, he'll go to it. Thank you very much, Bill Mack. Does that surprise you that the trainer is saying it's on the fighter? It is on the fighter, Joe, because I think they're telling Terrence the right things. They, they had a game plan, and I'm not sure this was the game plan. But sometimes, as a fighter, you're stubborn. You just don't want to box. You want to fight. Tim, you know a little I'm something that, about exactly. that? Listen, I know a little exactly. something about that, and that's what we're seeing from Crawford tonight. You can't explain it. It just happens. You don't want to move. You don't want to box. You just want to compete and fight, and that's what Crawford's doing. No, it's fun to watch, that's for sure. Crawford's had success when he's marching forward and punishing Kaviasis to the body. And again, I'm not sure from Kaviasis if I do anything different. Look at that. Look at that. That's what you got to do right there. There's a left uppercut from Crawford. He steps right into that kitchen. He's smelling it now. He's he orthodox now. He smells the knockout. And now, as a righty, Crawford comes in. There's a three-punch combination from the chip. Oh, and Kavayaskis comes back and lands a combination. Oh. And Crawford just nails him. Twenty seconds remains, round number seven. Kavayaskis goes down. You wanna fight? Here comes Bud. One of the best finishers in the boxing. Looking for the uppercut, straight right hand. Oh, he's got Kavayaskis hurt here. Looking to finish him here in the final seconds of round seven. Kavayaskis willing to trade. My oh my, is that good stuff. This kid is an animal. Down, and he's gonna be moving that head, so you, you, you throw those jabs on his shoulders and his, and his body. Stab him, okay? Make, make sure you keep the hands up because he's gonna be looking for that right hand, okay? And a, a wild left foot. That's his savior. The knockdown scored in the seventh round. Yeah, yeah, this is attitude right here. Beautiful shot behind right. the ear from Terrence Crawford. He's willing his way to a knockout victory against Kavioskis. He took exception to being hurt. He feels like he's the number one fighter in the world, and you're not supposed to hurt me, and he's making Kavioskis pay for everything that he did early on in this fight. In that seventh round, Terrence Crawford landed a fight high, 23 power punches and threw 39. Let's see if he quickly gets back to that form. Terrence has felt the punching power of Kaviaskis. He's not being phased by it. He's going to step to him the rest of the way. He 
And you heard Brian McIntyre, a.k.a. Bo Mack, his longtime mentor and trainer, say to him, are you comfortable staying right-handed? The answer is yes. And that is how he did damage in that seventh round. Good work doubling up the left hand from Kavayaskis. Bud did have the right arm pinned, trying to block most of that with the elbow. Kavayaskis willing to work on the inside. I think that's a ploy from Crawford. He just wants I to get too. Kavayaskis opening up. Yep. Crawford is looking right now for that opening, and he's going to explode here in just a few seconds. Well, you can see him ready to snap with that jab. There's that right hand that Bud wants to land. Yeah, but if Bud starts at the body, the head will be open. He just did. He had a sweeping left hand to the body and then came upstairs. And now Kavayaskis right in the kitchen with a combination, including the left hand. Mm. Double right uppercut from Crawford. A little lean forward from Kavayaskis. Crawford made way with two uppercuts in the inside. Fan-friendly fight with these two. And the champ made a decision to have it that way, responding to what happened in the second and third round from the title challenger. He smiles and shakes it off and then goes with a four-punch combination. But all those shots are to the head. He needs to get those shots down to the body to bring the hands down to Kavioskis. Now back to that southpaw stance where he splits the guard with a left hand. You can see Crawford talking into that right ear of Kavayaskis as he pushes him back into that blue corner. Attitude. Can't teach that. Kavayaskis got to let that right hand go. As soon as Terrence Crawford gets close, he needs to throw a right hand, a looping right hand. He needs to throw a shot at Crawford to back him up off of him. He's Crawford. throwing, he just ain't backing him up. Crawford very comfortable standing right in front, punching between punches as Kavioskis nice drives him straight back and ties up. And that'll get him through round number eight. Every time Bud Crawford goes down to the body, when he starts to the body, it sets up the head shot. Nice right hand. After going to the body first, starting with that body work. Ruffer ball, Kavyaskis right to him, sat inside. Kavyaskis got lazy with his chin on the platter, and Terrence Crawford took full advantage. In the last two rounds, Crawford has a 50 to 38 edge in punches landed. Round number nine. Crawford took that last he, round off and... He's got a rhythm to him right yeah, now. Yeah, he's back. Oh, a lunging left hand. That backs up Kavioskis. Oh then an uppercut. An absolutely brilliant uppercut. Four, five, six, seven, hey. Remember, he is I'm one of the in. best closers in the business. Let's watch how he does it here. One punch. That's it. Bud Crawford, title defense. Ninth round knockout in a thriller. Far more drama than we ever thought we would have. But the champ just acted like one. 44 seconds. Let's show you the first knockdown that came early here in round number nine. Just like Dre said, it's attitude. It's attitude, people. Terrence Crawford wasn't happy. Mauling him, came around with the looping left hand, hurting Kavioskis, getting him against the ropes, and then look at the uppercut, how he sneaks it up the middle as Kavioskis leaned forward just a little bit, and he found a way yeah, with that not, nice uppercut. Yeah, it's not difficult. Terrence Crawford made up his mind, and I'm going to stop you for hurting me and I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to, to get that done, whether I'm in a yeah. southpaw stance or the right-hand stance. And Kavioskis felt every bit of Terrence Crawford tonight, and he realized that his levels to the game, and, and this dude has an intensity that's different than most. 
And here's the end of the fight. Terrence Crawford again attacking with that looping left hand. It was available for him earlier. And here it is again. Nice little uppercut coming around. Down goes Kaviaskis. Got to get that last punch. Beautiful right hook right here. Yeah, that hurt. Right on the ear. That hurt. And down goes Kaviaskis. And that was the end of the fight right there. Amazing work from Terrence Crawford. Go ahead. Ring that bell. And now and here's we Jimmy have Lennon. The time 44 seconds of round number nine. Our referee in charge, Ricky Gonzalez, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. And still, the undefeated WBO welterweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud Crawford. Well, we are asked to vote for the pound for pound list every so often. The three of us at this table look at the body of work, we look at the way he's done it, we look at how long he's done it, and how he goes about his business, and time and again we fill out our ballot and say Terrence Crawford is the number one fighter in the world. As his mom, Miss Deborah. <laughs> dances her way into the ring to celebrate with her son. Bernardo. This has to be mom in the ring, Miss Deb, and the sweetheart, as well, the wife, the Terrence Crawford, a family man. Terrence, you turn this into a street fight. Is that the point you wanted to make? First and foremost, I'd like to thank God, because why, without him, none of this would be, a, be possible. But uh, I thought I'd entertain y'all for a little bit, you know? Uh, he's a strong fighter, he's uh, adorable, and I thought I'd give the crowd something to cheer for and be excited, excited about. Round two, he caught you. It looked like a knockdown, it wasn't counted as one. How hurt were you? I wasn't hurt at all. As you see, I got up and went straight to him. You know, uh, he caught me with a good shot. As I was bending down, he kind of pushed me, you know, and I was just like, all right, you know, now let's, let's step to him, because I wasn't hurt by no means. As you can see, I walked through everything he threw all night. We talked about the fact that he didn't talk leading into this fight. There was no animosity, but you had that mean streak at the end in the finish. Walk us through that beautiful finish there where you dropped him and then you finished him with just one shot. Well, yeah. Uh, the round before that, I noticed, you know, my coaches kept telling me stop loading up. You know, uh, I was loading up a lot uh, this fight because the first couple of clean shots, that I landed on him, I, I knew I hurt him. You know, so I was trying to give the crowd what they wanted and I was a knockout. And uh, I was loading up, but then when I started letting my hands go, that's when I started, you know, landing more uh, fatal shots. And after I dropped him with the uppercut, I came back, I was like, all right, he's parrying my jab. I'm gonna fake the jab and th just come out with the right hook. It took you a long time to switch to the orthodox stance. Why was that? Then once you did, it changed the fight. Well, I wanted to come out orthodox from the jump, but my coach was just like, go, go southpaw and uh, jab, jab, you know, see what he got. And I was like, all right. You do it once again here at Madison Square Garden, another knockout win. Most importantly, 2020, everyone's expecting great things from you. Who do you want? Well, listen, I've been saying I'll fight anybody. I've been saying that for I don't know how long, so I don't really got to call out anybody. You know, I fought my mandatory. That's because I had to. I'm not ducking anybody on the PBC side or even on the top rank uh, side of the uh, platform. I f I'm, like I said, y'all pick them, I'll fight them.